the gene expression it's it, it, this is a chapter that is going to allow us to see last last chapter was the gene replication how the gene replicate itself how the dna replicate itself during the s phase now we are going to see the gene expression how the dna got expressed into a protein and between the dna of course for eukaryotic cells they are in the nucleus and uh, our ribosome the one that they are going to, to synthesize the proteins are in the cytoplasm. So it's not the DNA that will travel and go to the bind to the ribosome and make the proteins. No, it's RNA that will actually copy the information from the DNA and then tra travel across the nuclear envelope to go into the cytoplasm and bend to the ribosome to start making a protein. So for eukaryotic cells, the DNA exists inside of the nucleus. For prokaryotic cells, we don't have a nucleus. So everything's happen inside of the cytoplasm and sometimes the, um, the translation into a proteins starts before even the transcriptions into an RNA uh, finish. So they are, as you can see in this slide, this this is the concept map. They are um, two steps for the gene expression: transcription and translation. You got it. Transcriptions happen in the nucleus. The DNA get transcripted into a messenger mRNA, and then the translation where the, pro, the mRNA is now in the cytoplasm, it's called translated. He got translated into protein. The translations happen in the cytoplasm or cytosol. The type of RNA that I need you to know is the RNA is the one that will be transcripted from the DNA. So in another word, sanitized by the DNA. A ribosome, a ribosomal RNA, the one that's made by the nucleolus, and the one needed to form ribosome, which are the factory for proteins. And then the transfer RNA, it's like bringing amino acid. The transfer RNA is have a two sides. One side, he is going to bend an amino acid, and the other side have what we call a Let me move on, and they will show you exactly what, what is a codon and what is an anticodon. You know that amino acid, how many we have? We have 20 amino acids, all right? And how many nitrogenous bases we have? We have a four for the DNA, A, T, C, G, all right? Correct. So each uh, triplet for, I mean, it's a triplet of those um, nitrogenous bases. It's uh, for DNA is A, T, C, G. For RNA, we don't have a T, it's a U. It's a triplet. Remember, that is the RNA that will be transcripted. So any triplet of nitrogenous base of RNA called for an amino acid. So therefore, we're supposed to have 64, right? A codon. So um, actually, we, they are not all codon. They are not all called those... Uh, uh, they code for an amino acid. Well, there are three of them that they don't code for no amino acid. And we call them a stop codon. Stop codon. It's always starting with the U, uracil, UAA. That's one stop codon. It doesn't code for an amino acid. And UAG. And UGA. So uh, the way I remember it, you American Airlines, you Georgia, and then I reverse it. This is this three, three codon. They are three nitrogenous base, uracil and uh, adenine adenine, or uracil adenine guanine, or uracil guanine adenine. Those are stop codon. They didn't code for any amino acid. Those are the amino acid, phenylalanine, leucine, serine, leucine, proline, methionine, isoleucine, lysine, arginine, 
serine. Those are amino acids. We have like 20 amino acids and we have like almost 20 power for it's almost 64 codons, but three of them, they don't code for an amino acid. They are what we call stop, stop codon. We have one codon that I am not going to ask you to memorize all those those codon, their corresponding amino acid, but I want you to memorize what is the stop codon, right? U American Airlines, UAA, U Georgia GA, O U A G. Those are stop codon, and also the start codon. So it can it call is called the start codon, and but it called for a amino acid that we call methionine. It's A U G August. So those are the genetic code using the nitrogenase base for RNA, UCAG, and then the, the fact that we have 20 amino acids. So therefore, every triplet like UU code for filinanine. When that you can tell about this uh, genetic code is that if you can see, is that some amino acid can be called by one or more codon. You can, by, for example, over here, we have a phenylalanine. Phenylalanine can be called by UUU and can be called by also UC, UUC. Trionine, look at how many codons they can be called by. But if this codon code for trionine, it's called only for triunine. Like ACU, you will not find it coding for another amino acid. He will code only for one amino acid. It's very specific. So one amino acid can be called by some, uh, several uh, codes. But if this code on code for this amino acid, he will code only for this amino acid. So this is the genetic genetic code so um this is a new version of it which is the same thing so let's go back to our gene expressions for prokaryotic cells everything's happen inside of the cytoplasm because we don't have a nucleus and sometimes translations happen before even transcriptions finish for eukaryotic cells, transcriptions happen in the nucleus, and then translation happen in the cytoplasm, where the ribosome exists. Let's look at the steps, okay? First of all, initiation. The first step is called initiation. And not if you remember the DNA is double helix, right? So it's double strand. Not both strands are going to be transcripted into DNA. Only one strand will be transcripted into the DNA. And this, this strand, it will be the strand that is in the three prime, five prime. Three prime should be in your left hand. So the one that will be transcripted over here is the one in the bottom, which is because the three prime is in the bottom. It's over here, not the one in the top. It's the the one. How it now how, how it starts? They have an an, an an enzyme called RNA polymerase. This RNA polymerase will recognize what we call a promoter that is in the three prime strand. The promoter for human is a bench of T, A, T, timing, adenine, timing. We call that tata box for human. So we will recognize this tata box and he go further as few nucleotide, nucleotide further. And he start, he do two things, do RNA polymerase. He's going to open the DNA, cut the double strand, 
and add RNA nucleotide that are complementary of the transcription unit that exists in the DNA. The DNA that is the template to make the RNA. So the template over here, I told you the three prime should be in your left, right? So it's this one. Is the one that when the, the supposedly that this is RNA polymerase, this enzyme will recognize the water, which is a tata box, okay. And he starts opening and he starts adding, they're in the, what we call transcriptions, adding nucleotide that they are complementary. So the complementary for A, A, this is an RNA, it's you, because T doesn't exist in RNA. Complementary for C, it's a G. Complementary for C, it's a G. Complementary for A is U. Again, U, 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 G, G, C, U, C, A. Here you go. I make my <coughs> RNA messenger, the one that is in red right now, messenger mRNA. And each triplet code for an amino acid. It's, a, it's, it's what we call codon. UCG, I go back over here. What is UCG? U and C and G. UCG, UCG, it's a serine. Sorry, it's UGG. Sorry, sorry, I cannot see. So I was thinking, it's UGG. It's trip, trip, t, TRP, triponin. It's over here. The next triplet, it's UUU. UUU, it's phenylalanine. Okay, so I put it back. This is the second amino acid. The third, the third triplet is U. I cannot see with I put some. I'm sorry, I have to take it. Brush, arise. Arise, arise. I cannot see with the blue on the top of it. The second one is GGC. Let's see, GGC. G, G, C, G, G, C, it's glycine. Okay, and then U, 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 C, A, U, and C, A, U, C, A, it's a serine. So I make my peptide, that's my peptide now. We have four amino acids, that's my peptide that is coming from, uh, it's, it's been um, uh, expressed using a template of a DNA that go from three prime, five prime. Not both the templates can uh, play this role. Only one, and I told you it's the one that is always three prime, five prime. Three prime should be all the time in your left hand. When you are looking at it, should be at your left hand. That's the only template. Once the helicase done the job, then the, the, the DNA came together, a double strand. The messenger mRNA had to move into the, uh, from the nucleus into the cytoplasm. Once in the cytoplasm, it got attached to the ribosome. But I will, uh, I will focus on the transcriptions first, okay? So again, I insist on this. This is my Tata. This is the three prime. Where is the three prime? This is the blue. The sky blue is my DNA. The sky blue is my DNA. Right? And uh, the one that will be the template 
to make my messenger mRNA is the one in the bottom strand, this strand, because my tree prime is in my left. This is what I always told you. You look at the tree prime that is in the left. RNA polymerase is this big one. He do double job. He will open the double strand and add RNA nucleotide, complementary. So he will recognize the Tata box. Here is the Tata box. Did you see the promoter? Tata box. And A, he had a U, and A, he had a U, a G, a the C, a T, he had an A, a G, a the C, C, a the G, etc. So this is the, the, the RNA polymerase will be elongated, so it gets initiated by um, recognizing a promoter. In human, it, this promoter is data box, all right? And uh, elongate from five prime, you see the directions? five prime to do three prime elongation. Again, over here. The template is the one in the bottom. This is the two blue are the double strand DNA. Only one will be the template to transcript into an mRNA. It's the one that have a three prime, five prime, three prime should be in your left. So it's the one in the bottom. So here you go, the RNA polymers will recognize the promoters, as you can see. And once he's sitting on the promoter, he will move a little nucleotide and have his transcript unit. So he is already like telling himself, I am going to transcript this part. That's my transcript in it. This is the one I am going to transcript. So he starts transcripting, adding complementary a nucleotide that they are for the RNA, not for the DNA, but they are complementary of the original DNA that the DNA that play a role as a template. And he got elongated from five prime to three prime. He's coming, he's going this way. And of course, during this process, they have a lot of transcriptional factors that play a role. All what you are seeing over here, and not necessarily to know all those names, they are just calling them transcriptional factors that play a role on helping the RNA polymerase to, to be a transcripted, to do the transcriptions. Remember, this RNA polymerase do double job, open the DNA and add nucleotide, complementary nucleotide. As soon as he recognized the Tata box, which is the, the promoter for human promoter. Once I complete the RNA transcript, the RNA polymerase it, an enzyme is not consumed by the, these reactions, it will be free. The DNA come back together as double strand and the RNA is completely transcripted. So I know how to start for the RNA, uh, RNA's promoter, um, for the RNA's uh, polymerase. I recognize the promoter region, but how I recognize that I have to stop? I recognize what is a, what we call termination sequence, which is a just bench of T, 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 T sequence. We call that a polytel. Just when he saw this T, 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 polytel, he stopped, right? Okay. 
Before to move into the cytoplasm, the RNA that has been transcripted go what we call RNA processing. RNA processing, and I am going to explain to you why that means. First of all, RNA have to cross this big envelope of a B layer of phospholipids, double membrane. It's an envelope, all right? That's one. Second, he should not be attacked by the enzyme because it's a stranger. This is a compartment and the cytoplasm is completely different compartment than the nucleus. It should the once he's here, he will be in the cytoplasm, he will be considered as a, an invader. And what we do to invader, we kill it. All right. So he doesn't want the enzyme that they are in the cytoplasm to destroy it. So we have to protect itself, this RNA, a messenger mRNA. And second, he has to be recognized by the ribosome. Ribosomes are two big, one small subunit and one big subunit. I don't know. The ribosomes is one big subunit and one small subunit. And this small subunit have what a site that we recognize actually it's a binding site for an mRNA. So we have to be recognized by this binding site. So this is why we do during this RNA processing. First of all, I am going to go to the five prime of mRNA and put what we call a five prime cap. Five prime cap, it's a modified nucleotide that will be able to be recognized, be able, that's the five prime cap over here. It will be able to be recognized by this uh, uh, ribosome subunit. That recognize the Banding site for mRNA have to go in the ribosome to attach once in the cytoplasm. Also, another thing, remember what I told you, we have an envelope, a nuclear envelope. He needs to not to be able to cross this big sandwich, this hydrophobic sandwich. So we are coming at the a tree prime of it, and they are going to put a lot of poly A a lot of a adenosine because they are hydrophobic so they can be able to cross this big sandwich of hydrophobic fatty acid that exists in the bilayer of phospholipids so i put a a a it's just adenine adenine is very hydrophobic as an amino uh, amino acid as a nitrogenous base sorry so i put a a a a a lot of it so here I am now. I am having a five prime cap that will be able to be recognized by the ribosome. And I am having a tail that is a, 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 a tail. This is another thing. So now I am able to um, to uh, this modification. I'm able, the RNA is able to go and cross the envelope nuclear to because of the poly A tail, the A, 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 A. At the three prime, the five prime, it will be recognized by the ribosome, so he can bend to it. And also, he will, he will be protected from this hydrolytic enzyme that exists in the cytoplasm. He will not attack it because it's a stranger coming inside of their uh, environment, which is the cytoplasm. He came from another environment, which is nuclear environment, to not be attacked. So, any, so uh, that's it. Uh, is the RNA mature enough already? No, not yet. When he gets transcripted, unfortunately, when we get transcripted, they don't have all the codon that they are going to be expressed into protein. They don't have, they do have some sequence. They are just, they don't code for any amino acid. They are just antron. And uh, during what we call uh, RNA processing, uh, they are going to get rid of those antron 
by splicing, we call that. They have a bunch of enzymes plus chosomes, a variety of uh, enzymes that uh, actually a bunch of molecules of proteins, they recognize those, uh, the end of those antrons and sit on it and cut them. And the antrons, uh, we don't really know what the antrons do, but if we try to transcribe RNA in the lab without really the presence of those antrons, uh, the transcriptions will not happen correctly. So it may play a role, but I don't, we really don't understand why this should be there and then we should take them out but during a process called RNA splicing by using those splasiosome, uh, which is bands of small nuclear variety of protein. They just sit on them, make a little very heavy where in the, in the, in the, in the entrance at the point like their heavy weight completely cut them, splices them, splices them. So we cut the entrance. So in the end, what I got, I got my RNA not having any entrance on them, only exon. So my I have my RNA have my five prime cap to be recognized by uh, the RNA, uh, the ribosomes site, I have only um, exon. I got rid of all those entrants uh, and uh, exon, the one that will have only codon that code for an amino acid. Entron does not have a codon. They don't call for not their region that you don't have no nit nitrogenous basis. They are just like bench of molecules. We don't really know what why they are there. We call them antro. They are entrude. And we have, we put um, a poly ATL, AAA. This is hydrophobic. They can cross the envelope nuclear and in the same time to protect them against the hydrolytic enzyme that exists, uh, that they are already there in the cytoplasm. So uh, I, I, I stop there for a minute and we go to the, another RNA transfer, uh, another type of RNA that will play a role here once the messenger mRNA is in the cytoplasm. We call it um, RNA transfer. And if you look at it, it's like an L. We call it RNA transfer. This RNA transfer have two regions. They have a region that uh, attach an amino acid, and they have a region that have actually an anticodon. What's that mean? Let me explain it by an example so you can understand it. You know that AUG, AUG, as codon code for an amino acid called methionine, right? Methionine, M-E-T, all right? So if this is, for example, this is methionine, right? This part over here, those three circles, they are green, completely in the end, they have to be, I don't know which which uh, which amino acid is that, but for sure I think it's a phenylalanine because it's a, a ring. I think it is phenylalanine. But anyway, I imagine that I have now, I'm going to make another scenario. I have my, my L, which is my RNA transfer, RNA transfer, and they have here methionine. that's met over here, it is methionine. Over here, it's a non-ticodon. What's that mean? It's the a complementary of the codon that code usually for methionine. I said it's EUG, so it's going to be U, A, C. U, A, C, which is the complementary for AUG. AUG, the complementary of it is U, a and T, UAC, 
So this is how it is going to be. So this transfer RNA have a methionine over here and have what we call the anticodon. The anticodon is the complementary of the codon that usually code for the methionine, which is UAC. He carried that. I will explain to you how. But first of all, how, once he got charged with the corresponding, usually the transfer RNA exists with the anticodon already attached to it. But he got charged. How he got charged? By a enzyme called amino acetyl transfer RNA. This amino transfer RNA have a site for a specific amino acid. Of course, you use ATP, a lot of energy. Let's not think about ATP a lot, okay? Let's move only. So he have the amino acid. So supposedly he have uh, methionine. So he is looking for what? He's looking for an RNA transfer that is carrying the anticodon for methionine. Remember, AUG is the codon for methionine. The anticodon is UAC, the complementary of it. So he's looking for a transfer RNA that have this AUA, UAC on it, and he bring it. Once he bring it, he got attached because the, the ATP here is used as source of energy. He charge it, he put it in, and then here we go, my air transfer RNA got charged. This is not going to happen unless the messenger mRNA is attached to the ribosome. So I am going to explain also what is ribosome. As I said it earlier, you have two subunits, one large subunit that you are seeing over here in the red pinkish, and the other one with the purple blue is the small subunit, all right? The small subunits have like what we call a bonding site for mRNA, and the large subunits have those three sites one of them is a bonding site, which is amino acetyl transfer RNA site. This is where the transfer RNA enter. We have the bonding site, the peptide transfer. This is a bonding site for the peptide. And then we have an exit site. Okay. Once you remember my mRNA that has been transcripted go through processing, processing include also uh, splicing, he move into the cytoplasm, he go and attach to the small uh, subunit of ribosomes, here we go, I have my mRNA, which is a red, my five prime, and it's so funny how it go, the ribosome, he starts moving around, like looking for something, tick, 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 until he find what? The first codon. The first codon is a start codon, which also called for methionine, which is the AUG. This is why, what he's looking for. He's looking for this famous start codon called AUG. Once he found it, bingo, he called the large subunit of ribosome to come and get attached. And he bring, of course, the, the transfer RNA that has been charged with the methionine come in, attached to it. And you remember I told you we have the anticodon UAC is going to attach to it because A is complement by hydrogen in bonding. A is complementary for U, A for um, U, and C for G. This is why he have to have the anticodon on them, which is just a complementary for any codon that exists in the mRNA. So he came. So now um, the large subunit is attached, okay? And he continued, the uh, ribosome continue now traveling until he reached the next three codon, the next three nitrogenous base. The next three nitrogenous base is a G, you see, I'm going to go back to my code genetic can, uh, code and see what a G, you see is. G, you see, where is my uh, G, you see? G U C G U C. It's a valine. So I am the transfer RNA with valine is coming. It's 
It's a violin. It's coming. And band to the A side of the uh, rebozo. And then the rebozon is moving. And when he moves, he push this one. This one will go this way. And those he's pushing, he go this one. Once he got um, in the exit, he go um, completely to transfer RNA, bring the amino acid. The amino acid, this is will attach to the valine in the P site. And then the third codon, the third codon is UUC. UUC is bringing phenylalanine. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. This is how it starts the translation. The translation starts by initiation, which is recognizing the start codon. Elongation the ribosome is moving along the mRNA, reading all the triplet nitrogenous base that we call codon that called for an amino acid, and the termination when he recognizes, of course, the stop codon. You see here, recognize here UGA. UGA, if I go to my code genetics, it's a stop codon. Doesn't call for any amino acid. UGA. UGA, it's a stop. You see it? It's a stop codon. So once I got my stop codon, I stop, I stop. There are no more translation. My peptide is made. I got my polypeptide. Everything got dissociated. They are instead of an amino acid that came and attached uh, with the uh, RNA to transfer that came and attached to the stop codon, it's a releasing factor that came attached plus water. And once that get attached, it dissociates everything. The ribosome dissociate from the small cell unit. The mRNA messenger got uh, dissociated. And now I make my proteins. So this is exactly how these transcriptions happen. And of course, nothing is perfect. I mean, mutations could, could happen during the this um, uh, gene expressions. Some of these mutations is what we call silence mutations. Silence mutation in when I replace one base, nitrogen is based by one another, but it, the mutation is silence because for some reason, you remember what I told you that uh, one amino acid can be called by more than one codon? So even if I replace it, for example, I replaced you here by, uh, uh, I didn't sit an, a good example over here. I replace um, you over here by an A. You over here by an A or by C or by G, I still called for, uh, by, uh, by C, I still called for filling alanine. This is a silence mutation. It doesn't, or if I replace A by G, I still code here for leucine. Or if I replace a C by G, I still code for leucine. So or it doesn't really change. So this is what we call silence mutation. The mutation is there, but it's silence. Missions, uh, mutations still code for amino acid, but not the right amino acid, and therefore completely change the sequence of my proteins. No sense mutations? Well, I, I got the start codon, and sadly, it's the stop codon that I got. That's no sense. I, I didn't even make my proteins. So I changed the uh, one amino acid, to another, and they introduce a stop codon. So that's end our uh, lecture. This is our last 